So let's talk about a receiver that there's been a lot of polarizing takes on. Some people think he's going to be a guy in that top eight range. Other guys are fading him completely. It's Adam Thielen. Right now his ADP is the wide receiver 10. Let's play a game here, Alex. Too high or too low on Adam Thielen <laughs> at the wide receiver 10? It's too high. I don't know. And the problem is, it's just the ADP. I like Adam Thielen. I think he actually is going to bounce back this year in a sense. But at wide receiver 10, that is ridiculous. And it depends where you're drafting. I know some areas, some sites have him as low as like wide receiver 14 or 15. But either way, it's too high for me because there are so many guys in that same range that I'm taking over him. I'm taking Allen Robinson, Odell Beckham, Amari Cooper, DJ Moore. I'd much rather have any of those guys than Adam Thielen last year. He was banged up. He only played 10 games. He had 30 receptions, 418 yards, and six touchdowns, which is not necessarily great even in 10 games. And then in 2018, Thielen actually had a, a mega season, 113 receptions. Remember early on in that year, he was actually on pace to break the single-season reception record. That was But massive. 113 catches, 1,300 yards, nine touchdowns on 153 targets. He was wide receiver seven that year in PPR formats, and I think that was his absolute ceiling. So he's climbed up to the point where even if he repeats an incredible season, a career year in 2018, he's still only returning ADP value. So to me, I know Stephon Diggs is gone. 94 targets gone. But I, I just don't see the upside there for Adam Thielen. Two seasons ago in 2018 when he went off, the Vikings threw the ball 606 times. Last year, they only threw the ball 466 Third times. Third lowest. So, I mean, there's – yeah – so for me, it's tough because I don't think it's going to be as low as 466. I think the volume does go up next year, but it's not going to be 606. I think it's somewhere in the middle. And with Justin Jefferson coming in, um, you know, with Irv Smith potentially breaking out, things like that, I, I just don't know that Adam Thielen has the upside to be drafting him as a low-end wide receiver one. Steph, what's your take? Too high or too low? I think I'm with you on, on the too high train here. We like feeling a lot, but guys, we, we, we talk in these categories. We want to measure everything relative to ADP because if we're just talking about players, like for every player, we could say we like them or we hate them. But really oh, what yeah. we're talking about is the... Give me feeling as my wide receiver too all day. Like I would take him Absolutely. over that tier of like T.Y. Hilton, Keenan Allen, Cortland Sutton. I'll take him over those guys, but he's not being drafted with those guys. And, and I'll talk about where I think he should be in terms of ADP, but there's something I want to talk about here for a second. It's something I'm seeing more and more. It's, it's this... I don't know if it's a it's a misunderstanding or just the the age old kind of cliche of like too many mouths to feed, but a lot of fantasy players and even some analysts that I'm seeing they're not really displaying a good understanding of of the slot position and where that efficiency comes from. The slot is only an advantageous position when the defense gets stretched with X and Y receivers because they're able to then get into these defensive mismatches with the third string corner with linebackers that don't have the speed. Those are more bigger body guys that can't keep up with a pure speed so that you're going to put in the slot like a Juju Smith-Schuster, like a Tyler Boyd, even like a Golden Tate. But what we see, what we see with these slot guys, which Thielen played 30% of his, his snaps were in the slot last season, but in his monstrous 2018 season was about 47% uh, of his plays were from the slot what you need as a slot receiver is a dominant guy on the outside, which is what we saw Thielen excel with when Stefan Diggs was out there drawing these defenders in. And this was a great breakdown I found on numberfire.com. It was a breakdown showing splits between Adam Thielen with and without Stefan Diggs on the field. And when Diggs was out, Thielen was seeing more volume. He saw two more targets a game, almost uh, two more receptions per game. So the volume went up but the yardage actually slightly decreased. So it's not like he's getting all this volume and it's going to be highly efficient without a Stefan Diggs or without a Justin Jefferson that can't emerge. At the pace for a full season, he would have been eighth in targets, but the, the, the yardage actually went down. The efficiency decreased. We still got Kyle Rudolph there. Uh, you know, vulturing touches away in the end zone, in the red zone. So I think the volume will be there. It's kind of a volume play with Thielen. His touchdowns for me are what could take it over the top to where he could hit that wide receiver 10 ADP, but it does feel like you're drafting him at his ceiling. And the volume gets capped again by how little the Vikings actually pass the ball. We talked about it. They Third lowest in terms of pass plays last season, 31st in terms of pass plays per game. Then you add in the hamstring, the reoccurring like soft tissue injury that Thielen has. Really the situation that I see Thielen in 
is much more similar to like a Juju Smith-Schuster whose ADP is fourth spots lower at the wide receiver 14. Everyone's fading Juju in favor of Adam Thielen, even though Juju is way younger and in an offense that historically has passed the ball way more. So I have Thielen a few spots down from the wide receiver 10, more next to Juju. Um, like I said, he's in that, that you know high-end wide receiver two range. That feels a lot better to me. And we'll see if Thielen can get there this season. Like you said, if he's your two, absolutely love him there. Yeah, and, you know, it's tough because earlier this offseason, I really was kind of hyping up Adam Thielen, like bounce back player potential. And I have him as a, a high end wide receiver, too. And it's tough to now be fading him at his ADP because I guess everyone else was with me for the bounce back. I really thought coming into drafts, people would be fading Adam Thielen a lot more and he would be more of a value. But he's right up there towards the top. So that's disappointing. And I know the volume's a concern. And it, what you said about Stephon Diggs is great, too. And it, the good thing for Thielen is. They did bring in Justin Jefferson, who's not going to walk in and be as good of a player as Stephon Diggs was right off the bat. But they brought someone to come in and play on the outside, mix in and out with Thielen in the slot, you know, on the barrier, things like that, which should help. Justin Jefferson is a very good wide receiver. But the other thing is, you know, from a volume perspective, they did have those 466 um, attempts in 2019. But I, I really think that's going to come up significantly. One is just that was incredibly low, and there is room for regression there. There was that one game where Kirk Cousins threw the ball like 10 times <laughs> in week one. Um, but like also, Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But offensive coordinator last year, Kevin Stefanski, is now the Browns head coach. And a lot of people thought that heavy run scheme was a Stefanski thing. Um, he was calling the plays, and now Gary Kubiak is expected to be a play caller in Minnesota. And Gary Kubiak as the play caller is significant because – he loves passing the ball. And I know some of this, you know, is, is due to the scheme and things like that. And I don't expect the Vikings to totally change their offensive scheme and what they want to do. But in Kubiak's last four seasons as a head coach, um, his team's averaged about 590 pass attempts per season. Mm. So that was, yes, it was Denver with Peyton Manning, but it was also the Texans with Matt Schaub. So it's not like it's Hall of Fame city over here with, with Gary Kubiak. And some of that could be roster construction. Again, I'm not saying they're going to throw the ball 590 times this season, but he's not going to have this run-heavy approach that St uh, Kevin Stefanski had. So I think it's going to bounce out somewhere in the middle. And even if they bumped up to 525, 550 attempts in 2020, I think that's a huge bump for Adam Thielen, and it's going to give him some value. But again, like we've been saying, I just don't know that he's worth it as a wide receiver one. Like if Thielen's my wide receiver one, I'm not feeling necessarily great about it. You're only feeling good about it unless you're absolutely stacked at running back prior to that.